The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman sitting here for Tommy O'Brien. I think Tommy might be having a little technical problems there. I said I will be able. I just got that time. I'll, I'll make sure that I can be here at nine. Here I am, nine o'clock for the morning market kickoff. Now I can't give you the kind of information that Tommy gives. He does fabulous work on putting the fundamentals together with the technicals. But let's just go through this right now. The YM, which is the futures, the Dow futures, had a nice follow-through rally earlier today. They ran up to, they, they closed yesterday at about 33,000 and, what was that, 33,012. And they went all the way this morning up to 33,220 and then pulled back. Now, what I've been, I've been looking at, and I'll do this in, in, in a greater detail in my show coming up at 10 o'clock, my usual show, the Target Technicians Hour, but I thought I'd do this now because putting the fundamentals together with the technicals, I, I'll try to do that as best I can based on what I look at technically and putting it together with something like, look, the volatility index, to get a major, major thrust to the upside in the market, I'm talking about one that is sustainable, Invariably, it has to go up into the into the high. Mo the most recent high was 23.10 or something, 20, 23.08. 23.08. That is pretty high, but I don't think it's high enough to tell us that we've got the market low in place. I think it's a market low, and that there's a really good chance that some kind of bad news, whatever it is, filters into the market over the coming. So I think what we're looking at here is yesterday was some kind of an internal low, and now we have to wait for the residual low. And basically what it says is there should be a test. It's like an earthquake and then the aftershock. Sometimes the aftershock is greater than the earthquake. The earthquake sometimes it's nothing, and sometimes it's about equal. Most of the time, when I'm looking at markets, I look at what I consider some, maybe I should do this now, I wasn't going to do that because it goes into areas that I, I usually talk about rarely. So this is the, why am I looking at, oh yes, this is the Dow chart, uh, I'll open it fully. Um, and I, I look at it in terms of where there is something that resembles an internal low and where there's something that resembles a residual. I haven't looked at it for a little while, so I thought that there was a chance that that low that was made back on the 5th of October was an internal low and that we would wait for the residual low. But I have to also base it on the uh, volatility index. So it says to me that this is probably the inter internal low and that I'm still waiting for another uh, another. What happens in the internal low is it's the, the low that just sees the majority of whatever it is go to a low. The internal low is the emotional low. It's where the news headlines are huge. But in fact, all the work to the downside has been done. Many of the stocks that have been pummeled start to find support, and they're already moving up when that residual low comes into fact. And I talk about that in terms of the internal high and the, the residual high. It's the same thing. I, I These gray... Uh, rectangle blocks identify that there's one there's one I didn't put it in because I made it a huge one going to the side so I'm just going to get out of this and I'm going to say so what I'm looking at here is that there's a chance that we don't have to take out the low of Friday but that that low is going to be tested and that's just the way I'm looking at it right now so the Dow futures down minus three the S&P S &P futures are down five or 30,000. What am I looking at here? That's the Dow. Oh, I just changed the wrong chart. There it is. E ES, I'm looking at the continuous contract, and that continuous contract is at 41.91, which is exactly the same as the December futures, and it's holding pretty well. So when you look at this V-shaped pattern, look at that V-shaped pattern, look at that turn up. 
back in October from the low. This is, it says to me that it was a huge emotional response yesterday. And, and what I had said on Friday was that if Friday was very ugly, and the futures on Sunday night were ugly, and then Monday comes in just horrendous with headlines all over the paper saying, watch out, this is this is a bear market material. And the market goes down four, five, six, seven hundred points. If there was a reversal intraday with the VIX index up in the, look, yeah, I won't go there again, with the VIX index up in the high 20s, maybe even the low 30s, then we can get something that I can call a really strong reversal low. We didn't get that. We used up. We usurped all that energy. So I think that it, it's still a work in progress. But a chunk of the work might be done. All right, I'm done with that. Now let's go on. I want you to show you the uh, NQ, which is the um, NASDAQ, trading down four and a quarter at 14,412. It's not a big deal. But if today, regardless of what happens in the first couple of hours, by the end of the day, if the Dow is up, 250, the S&P is up, uh, let's, I'd have to say, 48, 38 to 48, um, and the Qs are up as well. And most importantly, the laggy indicator, the indicator that I call the key to market direction, semiconductors down five cents right now at 137.91. The SMHs, I should mention that we are still short from two points off the high, um, that's uh, the high of 161.17. We went short of just over 159. Um, I, all I can say is that sitting on the 200 period moving average, struggling to get off it, either up or down, it just tells me I don't think we're quite ready yet for the big turn to the upside. All right, got that, that out the way. Now, I need to, I need to look at this real closely. Uh, the TLT is up 61 cents at 84.60. I hesitated. I was thinking, you know, We've done so, there's so much damage to the uh, bonds that it's almost time for some kind of oversold rally, whether or not it, um, whether or not TNX dot X, whether or not it uh, is, is sustainable. That's another thing altogether because you've already made your peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology. D is where you've got to be careful. That's where you can get your biggest pullback or you can start a new buy mode. Um, it's down 21 ticks at 48.54, 4.854 in the T, uh, TNX. So with that said, I want to, before we go to our, um, I believe we're going to, I don't know if Kevin is there yet, um, but I believe we'll be going to Kevin, maybe after the break. So as it says right now, let me just finish this up. Crude oil, uh, crude oil is up 56 cents at 82.89. Considering what's going on in the Middle East, I would have expected that crude oil could have had an opportunity to get into the 92 area. It's at 82, so it's kind of sorting. That's, in a sense, that's a good sign. Uh, peak D, remember, we're always looking at those Ds, D in the weekly chart, just holding steady. The 9 is still way over the 14. That's still positive for the crude oil. And let me just once again go to the U.S. This is the, the bonds, a continuous contract, 30-year T-bond continuous contract, and it's up a half a point. It's actually given back some of the gains. I don't know when yields are going to start to at least come down to have some kind of relief in that area. Hasn't happened yet. Now's the chapter sitting here for Tommy O'Brien. Mark, morning market kickoff. I'll be back in a moment. Uh, I hope it will be with Kevin. I really want to hear what he says. It's, uh, Apple earnings coming out on Thursday. You'll know all about it. I'll be back in a moment. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Folks, we're back. I'm sitting in for Tommy O'Brien. This is the morning market kickoff. And being the morning market kickoff, being a Tuesday, who do we have on the line? Kevin Hanks. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Good morning, Basil. Happy Tuesday. Happy Halloween, Basil. Uh, yeah, that's right. And uh, have you already started nibbling at the uh, candy uh, that you're supposed to put out? Well, my Achilles heel is not candy, uh, Basil. My Achilles heel is salty snack so whenever they start handing out nachos for halloween that's <laughs> when i'll be all in basil <laughs> so kevin i'm going to just say this for me not having the volatility index skyrocket into the high 20s low 30s and getting that friday horrible friday horrible sunday night and a horrible monday instead it was a pretty good sunday night and a really good monday i think we usurped energy I call this an internal low. I'm waiting for a residual low. And now I'm going to hand it over to you. What are you telling your folks at uh, Schwab? This is going to be so important, I know. And you've got Apple coming up with earnings. What's happening? Yeah, the biggest news story right now this morning, I think, is the fact that Eurozone is disinflating as we speak. They came out with a GDP number about 6 a.m. this morning that was negative a tenth of a percent. France's GDP up a tenth of a percent. Italy unchanged. Canada just came out unchanged. Compare that to what's going on in the U.S., and there's a whole different divergence between these economies. And I you know there's a lot of economists scratching their head right now trying to figure out exactly why that's happening. And so... Uh, you, you know, we're watching Caterpillar's earnings. That was an interesting earnings uh, event. They, the stock spiked on their earnings per share, which beat, and the sales that beat, and then sold off hard on the outlook that they gave for fourth quarter. So that's going to be another trade, you know, one that's in the Dow, in the S&P 500. So we're watching that today. I think, I still think, Basil, the biggest headline of this week is going to be the Treasury refunding announcement that we get tomorrow morning. That means how much the U.S. Treasury is going to need in funding for the next two quarters. And I think we could go through some sticker shock there. Now, if that number doesn't disappoint just, just to, and wait, wait, impresses, wait. it could be pretty incredible, the swings in the market when that number comes out. So your anticipation is that it could be a lot higher than everyone's expecting? 
I, I do. I believe that it's going to be a pretty big number. Now, the whispers are coming out that it's going to be about eight hundred billion or something in that range, up around a trillion dollars. So, I think that's the whisper number that people will be judging the number based on. Yeah, but we, we have to see. You know, Basil, when's the last time that you remember we had to talk about supply in bonds? It's been years before Decades. we had to do that since we've had to do that now all of a sudden with interest rates up here with deficits up here with the fed not buying bonds suddenly we're talking about supply of bonds and the money that the u.s government has to raise it's it's a little bit of an interesting topic suddenly out of nowhere to come up and it's so also a topic that because we haven't had to talk about it for such a long time we do not know what the market response will be. We can guess, but we really don't know. We don't, haven't got a history of it yet. Yeah, I, I agree. I think this is going to be something new on everyone's radar. And, you know, there's been whispers about the deficit for, as, for a long time, Basil, as you know. But when interest rates were zero, no one cared. Now, with interest rates up around 5% in the Fed funds, and with a 10-year yield up around 4.8%, things are a little different here. And so I think that this takes on a whole new meaning going forward. And so, yeah, tomorrow morning when they announce that, I think that might be just as important, if not more important, than Jerome Powell at 2.30 Eastern, Basil. Very good point. Very good point. And what, what are you looking at for uh, your listeners in terms of options, in terms of earnings reports, well, is Apple really uh, pretty high on your list? Oh, it will be when once we get to Thursday, sure. Remember, they had an event last night where they announced a couple of new, new products. But, yeah, Apple, once we get later in the week, Apple will take over. But today, we're still trading AMD that has earnings out after the bell. We're going to trade Wayfair today that has earnings out after the bell. And then First Solar. So we're going to be all over the board today with earnings on stocks coming out after the bell and before the open tomorrow morning, Basil. So, yeah, we're, we're looking at three good names with the lead being AMD. We'll see what the overall semiconductor, you know, this tough competitor in the semiconductor uh, space does for their earnings. Yeah, those are also three very important areas that you're talking about. AMD uh, if you had to go back on a chart, decades and decades, I'm trying to think of the name of the guy who used to be there. I always remember it. I'm not forgetting it right now. Um, uh, it's gone from the single digits to the triple digits over and over, and they come back all the way down. It seems to be uh, weakening right now. So I think AMD is going to be a big tell as well because the semis are not acting as they should. They usually lead markets up and down. Right now, they're kind of stalling. Yeah, you're right. A lot of them have had they've run led by Nvidia, right? They've run to incredible valuations that frankly when the earnings come out, if they don't beat by a large margin, you see the price activity. Yeah. AMD hit $132 back in early summer, mid-June, and it's basically made, you know, lower highs and lower lows since then. And so Absolutely. this is a chart. And remember, AMD is the one stealing market share from Intel. AMD is the one that says by the end of the year, they'll have the most powerful AI chip. So this is one of those competitors that is really competing across the, the chip space. So we'll see what news they come out with as they enter the AI uh, fray and claim that they have the most powerful AI chip, Basil. So here's another thing, and Wayfair in the, uh, this is the furniture lighting cookware online. I mean, they were winners until they made a round number, 369 high back in January of 2021, and they're trading now at $42. Oh, they're up 12 cents pre-market. Wow, when these, make it, these guys make mistakes, it's just horrible. Yeah, well, when, when a company like this came out, you know, online furniture shopping, it, it was in, you know, during the pandemic, and people right. were using this, and this stock went, like you said, to $369, traded up near $300 for quite a while. Basil, now okay. down to four, just slightly below $42 to start the day here. So, yeah, this is another one where, you know, decelerating growth, 
that's the bad words to use with some of these names, Basil. And when you hear that term decelerating growth, that's not good for, for, for the price of a stock. And you can see what it's done to Wayfair. But still a company that does a fair amount of business, still a very young company that the pricing yes. just may have gotten a little ahead of its growth. Right. And in fact, the, the, what it, what it, the look out, what it looks forward to in the coming months is going to be very important in what they say. Exactly right. They, they've got to show um, that they're still growing and they're, that, that they're starting to turn around the growth. Remember, if you're a growth company, the worst thing you could say is decelerating growth, right, in terms of the price of the stock. You're not going to have a good multiple, so you've got to keep the growth going. Definitely. Kevin, we're going to look forward to your shows all week because this is a really important week. Thank you so much for coming on, and uh, we'll speak to you sometime soon. Thanks for having me on, Basil. Thank you. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more, and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tommy O'Brien. I'll be back tomorrow. We're looking at the, uh, uh, and let me just go through this real quickly because the market is now over, over and we can go to the cash position. So the Dow's down 32, 32,895. One of the things I was looking for was if there was going to be a turnaround on Monday, a very serious turnaround, it had to have just the most ugly opening. And then the volatility index, yeah, we are, VIX, V-I-X, goes skyrocketing up to the high 20s. And we get that beautiful reversal late in the day. But that didn't happen. Say we did the opposite.
we gapped up and we continued higher, had a huge move up. It was up 600 points in the Dow at one point. The, the S&P was lagging. But what happened was, yes, we closed a little bit under the high, but it was really a terrific candle. I just think that that was an internal low, and we have to now wait for a residual low. That's it. Make, make it as simple as possible. So let me just go through the numbers because I've got a whole bunch of questions with stocks that people are looking at. They want to get to it real early since the market's just opened. S&P is up 85 cents at 41.67. What you really want for a day like this is a thrust, a gap up to the upside and a continuation all the way through to the high of the day, getting close in this case to the 41.96, the nine period exponential moving average. I just don't see that right now. I think there's still just enough um, trepidation to say kind of a stalling motion. Looking at the QQQ, one, two, three, there we go, minus 15 at 349. Um, oh, it's a gray leg, A to the upside. Nine, uh, the 200 period moving average has acted as a support and a little bit of a springboard. Uh, we'll see what happens in the 351. Actually, 352.50 area is, is the place you need by Wednesday afternoon or Thursday. And that'll say, ah, now we can go a little bit further rather than starting our stalling motion immediately. Let's go to the, I wanted to go to... Um, We'll go to the uh, IWM, the Russell 2000. Uh, often when the market's starting to weaken a lot, the Russell has a little bit of strength and then it gives it up. So today it's up 52 cents and 163.64. I have to tell you this whole 160, uh, 161 to 159 area, wow, if that, that gets taken out, not a good sign for the Russell uh, 2000 small caps. I need to go to the SMH to see where they are. They're down 50 cents at uh, 137.47. So we were talking with, so I should say that for the Dow, we Dow the short of the short the Dow still from the exact high, stay that way. Did not get any to, into any new position on uh, Monday at the open. It would have been nice because if, if we had bought the uh, three times long like we often do, then we would have had a cushion and at least would have made money. And then we could switch to the short side if that's what I'm expecting. But in the meantime, Back of the ranch, uh, the semiconductors are telling us not quite ready for prime time. This is look that the weekly chart is getting even worse technically. So I just have to say whatever advanced micro devices has in store, AMD, as I was talking to uh, to Kevin about, AMD is this huge move up, huge move down. It's got, had a spectacular move to 164 November of 2021. Then it plunges down to the under 60. Then it goes to 132.83 um, in the uh, springtime. And boom, it comes down and it's now trading at 95.37. So whatever they say, my suspicion is that it's going to be maybe, maybe not. And, it's in, and that's going to be reflected in the price. It'll have to spiral and close over 100. It's at 95.46 right now and hold there for an entire week for me to say, hey, I think it's turned the corner. I don't think it's quite there yet because look, Intel, and usually you have competition brief between advanced micro devices and Intel, and Intel always loses. This time Intel's actually holding a lot better than some of those. Look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA, well, I need to get out of there. I need to go to the stocks, the questions that we were asked. Look, NVIDIA's down 11 at 400. And this is really important because it's got a uh, Chapman Wave dreaded H pattern in the weekly chart and it's taken out for the second week now, the left side low. So let's see, we've still, this is only Tuesday, we've got an entire week to go. Can it close back into the, uh, it's a 399? Can it get back into the four? Oh, what was that low? Uh, 409, air 409.80, it has to go over 409.80 to sa save the day. That was the low of the 20, week of the 22nd of September. Oh, so the questions have come in uh, about, uh, let me go through the one at a time, I wrote them down. So Wolf. So this is one that I had followed ages ago. I thought, wow, what an interesting name. I always like these names that, uh, that uh, yeah, tell a story. <laughs> Certainly this one tells a story. Wolf, Wolf Speed Inc. So what do they do? They're kind of in the EV area. Uh, they make devices for transportation, uh, power supplies, applications. Are really important, and they came down. And the question of the den was, Basil, is this a trough G? So I hadn't done any work on it until just a moment ago. My last notation was in the Chapman Wave methodology, F slash C. In other words, we had a D 
going down to the about the 15th of August, and then there was a big rally that failed, an arch formation, the dreaded H, took it out, and then I had an alternate count, which says gray A, and then when that D low was surpassed, it becomes uh, basically an E slash B, then an F slash C, going down to a D, or a G, and here it is, a G slash D. So earnings came out, whatever it was that came out last night, Bam, it goes up. It's up 5.50 at 33.22. This is a nice turnaround. Sustainability in this market, we've seen that. Look, we've got we've got Microsoft. Now look at this. Sustainability of a big rally. Look at this big move. Cap up, earnings news, I think it was. Pulls back sharply and then comes back. And now it's pulled back to 335.62 down 71. To, I, I must say for subscribers, we, we, we are looking at this kind of favorably right now in the sense that in the big seven, this is one that has done the job, has come out with good earnings. Amazon is in the same category. So let me just talk. go back to Wolf, W-O-L-F. Yep, uh, Amazon's down 75 at 131. So this is a really important moment. Why? <clears throat> because at 33.05, it's taken out. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's into the seventh day, seventh trading day um, after just going down, 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 down. How it sustains the move is going to be impossible. I would just say what I would I would tend to do, and I'm not sure this is your question to me, but I, I can't, I'm not going to read in the den right now because we're looking at this chart. Um, I would definitely take so This is a gift. You planned it beautifully. You did you know, your whole strategy worked out. I believe that I don't know if you went into calls or you bought it, but it's gapped up like you thought it would at the trough G. But it, we didn't know it was a trough G until today. And I would definitely take something off. How much is entirely up to you? But this is a gift, well planned gift. What is the expression again? Opportunity uh, uh, arrives at the door of those well prepared. Something like that. Anyway, that was you. Very good. And that weekly chart says, hey, don't get too carried away. This is it. This is this is not a good chart at all. All right. So with that said, um, oh, okay. Uh, thanks, Buzz. A half off already. Very nice. Okay, next question was uh, right here. VICR was VICR. I looked at this recently because of the question in the den. Oh, is that the is that good grief? Time flies. Wow, another segment up. Yeah, I'd be real careful. Oh, I said this before that I'd be real careful of Vicar, uh, this is Vicor Corporation. I forgot to look at what they did. Um, no, I, if, if you're short, hold the short. But uh, yeah, again, it's a situation. You where might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com.
A funds prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. This is an entry point on VICR, recall call. Uh, it gapped down five successions ago from the 52 area. It hit the 30s, it's trading at 39.35, an entry area. I, oh, wow. I can't say. I, I'm, I'm going to avoid this. I don't, maybe you see something that I don't, but the weekly charts made a lower low than it had in March, uh, and that goes for the monthly chart. In fact, the monthly chart is at a multi-year low from 2020. It's at the low of 2020 when it's already been up in the 160s and it's trading. Something's not right. I would much rather start to buy strength on this stock, but I would not buy weakness. And the only thing I would look at is if you want an entry point, give me a yell if it's trading for three sessions with above 42. And at that level, it hasn't once touch 40. It's hit the 42 level and it's moving higher without breaking 40. And then I'm going to say to you, you know what? Now we can start looking at it and see if there's something changing. But I, I, I'd be <laughs> this is, it's just too dangerous. Next question came in USDJPY. US so let me do this. First of all, the dollar right now, the dollar is trading up 21 ticks at 106.36, waiting for that Nine period moving average to cross negative. So far, it hasn't. And the weekly chart is still holding fabulously. That doesn't mean to say it has to make legs C above 107.35. But the MACD is good. The stochastics at 86%. That's excellent. The nine period moving average is way, way over at 105.79. It's way over 105.25, the black 14 period moving average. You've got yourself a little mini channel here. It's one of those patterns that sometimes breaks to the upside. I would just say, hold steady. Um, this is acting very well. So now let's go to, because the direction of the dollar and the direction of the Japanese yen, USD, JPY currency pair, very often go together. They don't go in parallel motion, but they go directionally. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I looked at this last night and I said, are we going to get a leg D? You would never expect that after the ugly action over the last, the, the previous two sessions. Look at this. We've got a D. The 9 period moving average is very strong. The uh, stochastic is weak at 65%. The MACD hasn't even turned positive. Yet I'm going with the 9 over the 14 as my bellwether. That's my indicator of last resort, and it is holding. I like this very much. It isn't very much higher than the peak C that was made four sessions ago, but this is now leg E. Now let me show you what I do. Uh, this is uh, Tommy show, but I'll show you in the channel wave methodology. I look at channels ever since I've drawn uh, on graph paper back in the 1970s and 80s. I used to use graph paper. Um, I have a whole stack of Dow charts going back from the 19, uh, 
1920, I think, was the last. No, I got it going back a little earlier than that. Uh, hand charted every single year, hand charted up until about the, the crash of 19, 1987. And then after that, immediately after that, we were going to computers. So I've even got a chart right there. I can see it all folded up. Huge chart because it was, was that the Nike or uh, Nikkei or was that the Dow? I think it was the Dow. Huge. When I had to glue all these pages together. Okay, anyway. So this is beautiful up channel. This is called the lopsided gravy cup. Um, where you go in a kind of a rectangle formation, you make higher highs and higher lows, which says you should get to a peak D at the previous peak uh, flagpole high, in this case right here, at 151.94 on the 21st of October, uh, the week of 21st of October of last year. And look, it's worked its way. This is just, look at these beautiful, um, I call them price time uh, targets. And you've gone right back there. And we're at the high today. So for 150.99, I said 151.94. Yep, yeah, 94. We're uh, a po uh, just under a point. Or it's called a point and a quarter away from making a multi-year high in the USD JPY. And so far, the stochastic is at 95% in the weekly. And the... MACD is still strong. Look, there it is, the MACD moving average convergence divergence. And the 9 is over the 14, the price is over the 9. So this is still showing strength in the yen. Let's look at the EUR, USD, because I think EUR, USD, the euro dollar currency pair, did okay. I uh, had a nice bounce. I failed to get to a peak D uh, today, but it's, it's doing okay. But if you look at the weekly chart, there is so much work that needs to be done. So I need, so. The question is USD JPY, and the answer is, I don't know if I'm missing anything on the way, let me just scroll down here slowly. And the answer is still acting very well. I don't, I can't say that it's, it's like an explosive move to the upside, but it is just steadily going step by step, higher highs and higher lows, and that is really a positive uh, way to look at things. Uh, let me just go, I'm going through this. Yes, okay, so... Um, so the euro has had a pretty decent bounce. Now, isn't it interesting? So what I've been talking about, uh, for those of you who don't know my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour, or my work in my opening call, Daily News Data, um, for quite some time, about a year, I'd say maybe it's over a year now because time flies, I, I have this, I talk about bonds, I call it bondy, crude oil, I call crudy, uh, do dollies for dollar, uh, gold is for gold and Vixie is for the Vixie. So we've got uh, Bondi, Crudy, Dolly, Goldie, Vixie. So those five icons used to have absolute correlations. When the dollar went up, oil came down. When oil went up, dollar came down. When bonds went up and yields came down, it invariably helped the market. If the dollar came down, gold would be at like a mirror image, in, in sometimes in price, but more just in, in direction. So the dollar goes up, gold pulls back. And then I said about a year ago, things have changed completely. The volatility index should be giving us readings, and those readings are incorrect because the market's not responding to the VIX at all. It's just in its own world. So this is the same thing now because I consider that gold is in a different, this is a geopolitical uh, medallion. In other words, when geopolitical or financial crises occur, money tends to go to gold. I'm talking about international money. Countries put money to work that way. The dollar, the dollar is the currency of importance, and it holds that. It's a premier currency, and it holds that uh, that title. So you've got to think of these separately. So the Middle East, gold is the issue. Well, how do I know that? Because if you look at the GDX. The GDX should be instead of a 28. By my usual looking at markets, when gold goes up, because I, I prefer to see the GDX, the gold miners, lead gold, because that's saying money is coming in and that money is being transferred into profits. But in this case, it's gold's gone up and wow, if it wasn't for that, I think that the GDX would be down the 23 area instead of the 2562 low that was made instead of a screaming from 25 to 30, which is really a good percentage move. 
But so far, it just tells me that gold is definitely there, but you've got to be very selective in the actual stock that you pick because they're not following the same way. I uh, hope I answered the USD question, but you really should want to know where where would be support for the USD JPY if it pulls back? And I'd say the 148, the whole 148, 47 area. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I have also a, a, a statement in the den was, I love, oh, where did I go? I, I scrolled down too quickly. Um, oh, am I going to find it? I love that you are a basket of companies and uranium via Sprott. Great combo. So URA is trading it up 84 cents at 26.60. I like the chart. Yes, I like the global X uranium ETF. Uh, question it keeps coming up. CCJ. And I said the chart. Where did I type that? Let's just put it over there. CCJ. Uh, oh, typed it into the deck. Uh, CCJ. Whoa, nice move. I said that that's a, that's a really it's a good chart, but it's got to a D. It needs to really show it's got amplitude to the upside, and this is a very strong move up, very nice, up 8.11%, up 3 at 40.92. Questions always come in about you, 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 you. Uh, whoops, typed it in again, wrong place. Uh, here we go. You, 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 you. Uh, yeah, the you, 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 energy fuels, and the one we have is the UEC, which is acting really well. It's almost at its highs. Recent highs is at 584. We're in at the 364 area. Uh, so this is very nice action. Yes, I do like it. 
So then a question came in about pins. And I saw this yesterday when I was buying a ticker. Um, it had it must have had good earnings. Um, pins is pin, Pinterest, uh, Inc., Discovery Engine for Recipes, Home Ideas Style. Huge move up, up four, up 16%, and 29.26 is one we followed a lot. And yes, this is acting very well. In my show coming up, I'll do a little bit more work on this. And natural gas, we went into the UNG the other day with a pretty tight stop. We got stopped out. I said, I like it, I like it. Um, we had a small position split into two, still got stopped out. But I must tell you, the way I'm looking at natural gas, I think natural gas is building energy uh, to be able to go uh, towards a 3.50 in the natural gas of 15 cents. I think there's a good chance that in November we start to see prices touching and then sticking in the three, uh, 380 area. And that's going to 380 area will be really important. So I'm going to wrap this up, but I'm coming right back for the uh, Tiger Technicians Hour. Check out my opening call, my daily news network. How's the chap signing off? Tommy, we'll be back tomorrow. Boys, there's a great show missing today. Hopefully, he's everything set for tomorrow.